Hey everyone, I know it's been a while, but I thought I'd get a review out. But it's a movie review and I haven't done one since the Bumblebee movie. And that was a while ago. But I decided, why not get things back moving again, get a review in place. So this is a, a spoiler-free review of Transformers Rise of the Beasts. I managed to see it today um, and the premiere in the UK. And I'm just going to go over like the basics you know, I'm trying not to give too much away in how I felt about the movie. There will be a spoiler review, uh, and I'm going to be doing that later. Uh, that won't be out for an hour, maybe a week at most. To give time for the movie to settle, plus I want to see it in the IMAX. Uh, I'll get to reasons why. Okay, so let's get on with the review. So, plot of Transformers Rise of the Beasts. Basically, we've seen at the trailers, the Autobots and the Maximals have to team up against the Terracons to stop Unicron coming to Earth with the help of Noah Diaz and Elena Wallace. That is it. That is it. It takes place in New York and uh, Mo uh, Peru. Monte Picchu, I think it was. Yes, it was. Monte Picchu. So, there you go. They have to stop them. That's all I'm going to say for that. <laughs> because there is things in it where they do explain why the Maximals are kind of now in the same universe as the Autobots and how this works. So the movie is, thankfully, a direct sequel to Bumblebee. Um, there's a few lines in there that hint towards that. And that's really the only spoiler I'm going to give. So we know now that the Michael Bay movies are kind of retconned. This is the way they're going. And it kind of made sense throughout the rest of the movie. This is what they're doing. So I'm happy with that. I think if you're a G1 fan or, or a Beast Wars fan, you're going to be happy with the movie. You're going to be happy with what they've done. Um, Autobot-wise, Prime as brilliant as ever, is actually fantastic to watch him in a Generation 1 style uh, constantly in the movie. I think that was one thing in the Bumblebee movie we really loved, especially the Cybertron opening, where we've seen basically our Generation 1 style come together in the movie verse. And it worked. Why it took so long and we never got it that way is beyond us. Um, I always remember... The excuse I seen on one of the DVDs behind the scenes, I think it was in Transformers 1, the reason they never done it, because it wouldn't make sense when they transform. Now we've had two movies and it shows it works. So, that's that, <laughs> okay. So Autobots are fine, Prime is great, Bumblebee, um, Bumblebee's there, that's all I'm going to say. Bumblebee's there, but the focus is more on Mirage and... I can honestly say Pete Davidson done a fantastic job as Mirage. He does feel like a Hot Rod character. The way it comes across is very Hot Rod. And if you see the movie, you'll see what I mean by that. It's very young Hot Rod from the 1986 movie. Um, then obviously it's a Porsche. Everybody was like, how can it not just be Jazz? Trust me, Mirage steals the show. And I'm shocked at saying that he really steals the show in this movie. Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Now, uh, RC is back. Uh, she's actually really good in this movie. We see a lot of RC in this. And Wheeljack as well. In this version of Wheeljack, compared to the one we got in Dark of the Moon, um, I don't even think he was called Wheeljack. I think there was one that was like Brains. I can't remember. It's been that long since I've seen it. This version's a lot better. I'm actually quite happy with this Wheeljack and even the look of him, it kind of makes sense when you see it. it's like, alright, oh, okay, he's not a fighter, he is a scientist and there's jokes that go along with it. Perfect. Maximals wise, Primal's brilliant. Ron Perlman is absolutely fantastic as Primal and you believe the character and it's kind of a way where... This is how you know this is a new this is a new universe completely. This is a new line of movies in the sense of the other ones never happened. Um, so it's basically he built he trusts the humans. He's going to protect the humans. 
and that's him and obviously Prime team up. Uh, we never really get much of like Cheetor and Rhinox, unfortunately. I was kind of hoping we'd get that comic relief a little bit with Cheetor, but it wasn't really there. The Maximums are taken very serious in this movie. Razorblade, I loved. I absolutely loved Razorblade being kind of like a story piece between um, the Autobots and where they've got to go with to find the MacGuffin of the story. So they nailed them down fantastically, I think, storyline-wise. Uh, they've done a really good job explaining their stories and why they've got to protect the universe against Unicron. So the Terracrons, and it was pretty... Uh, this has kind of worked the last two movies. Let's just scale back the baddies a little bit, okay? That's two now we've not had Megatron. But in their place, we've had great villains. And this, it's the exact same again. Much better compared to Age of Extinction. The real bright thing about that movie was lockdown. And it's kind of happened again, bringing in Scourge. What shocked me, and if you're a Destiny fan, in the sense that you've played Destiny, and I mean OG Destiny, and Peter Dinklage was the original voice, a ghost. We all knew Dinklebot could not voice act. He's a great actor, don't get me wrong, but he cannot voice act. He does an amazing job in this movie. He actually believes Scourge is evil. And there's a little twist to his character um, throughout the movie, especially with Unicron, which I think it will please a lot of 86 movie fans. And with Nightbird and Transit, they're great partners for him. Absolutely fantastic partners. The chase scene, I think we've seen in a lot of the trailers, really showcased them. And it was fun action. That's one thing I'll give it. It calls back to Revenge of the Fallen with the chase through the, chase through the forest with Megatron to tank, chasing Prime, etc. Absolutely fantastic um, action scenes. And it was really well paced. That's the thing. Now, the most important thing, okay, especially us G1 fans, <laughs> Unicron. They done well. And what do I mean by that? Without spoiling anything. They done it right. And I think it will work for what they're trying to do. And that's the way I'll leave it. Okay, so Unicron in this movie gets my seal of approval. I didn't like the fact in The Last Night they were going this whole idea he's hidden on Earth, blah, 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 blah. No, he's a planet. He devours planets. When you see him finally in live action on the big screen, you do get that 1986 feeling. You really do. It comes flooding back and now it's live action, albeit computer generated. But it looks great on a big screen. So, with the majority of the movie taking place in New York and in Peru, it's really the two places. It's not like so some of the other movies and how they're hopping everywhere like they did with like Revenge of the Fallen or The Last Night. It's just these are the two settings. 90s New York is fantastic. They nailed it. And like Bumblebee, like 80s, it had the 80s feeling. This has the 90s feeling. And the one thing I can appreciate uh, and I hated it, especially in the old movies, um, was product placement. I know it's got to be done, but when it insults you, that's where it gets to borderline. Now, what do I mean by that? If you remember Age of Extinction, remember when they had that trans metal, whatever it's called, that's how much I've blanked that movie. There's Beats, there's My Little Pony, there's a gun, etc, etc, etc. There's nothing like that in this movie. The real only thing they kind of hint, and remember this is Hasbro, is there's a young child in it, okay? And it's 1990s. What else was big in 1990s, okay? I won't, I'll leave that as a little, little hint, and I think Hasbro, after they've bought the rights, let's get this put in. So it's kind of wink-wink to the audience, and I'm kind of hoping they do something with it especially after the way this movie went. The film style and the sound throughout the movie was great. Again, with the last couple of ones, especially being in 3D now, 
pull the camera back, let the action happen, let the action flow, let everything be seen in the sense of how you tell a story. And the only time I felt it was a little bit tough was in the final battle scene because it's a lot of grey, a lot of dark brown and there's a lot going on. That's the only downfall I would give it just with the palette they used and how everything's shown off for the final battle. But again, it works as a blockbuster. A summer blockbuster, like you're invested in this battle. So it works in that sense. It's not as uh, as darkened compared to Endgame, where I felt Endgame was really dark when you're watching the final battle. This one, it wasn't. And it was great throughout the movie as well. A lot of colours. The settings for like so New York, let's keep it at night. A little bit during the day, but let's keep New York at night. It suits it. It looks perfect for the, the, the scenes they use throughout the movie. And then in Peru... The jungle's amazing. That's all I was saying. It worked for the Maximals. So overall feelings for the movie, I'm happy with it. Okay. I, I got a bit of a shock at the end. The If you're a fan of the Japanese side, you get what they were doing. And you get why they've had to change just a little bit. Okay. And the reason of this is because if you go back to Transformers Revenge of the Fallen, remember they'd done the Pretenders. Now, as fans of Transformers, we know what Pretenders are. The general audience didn't, and they just generically thought, okay, this is just a silly robot pretending to be a human. What they do in this movie makes sense as a Transformers fan. It really does make sense. And we've seen it in the trailer, so we know there's something happening and it's came from the Japanese side. But how they are going to continue it makes sense with the way for the general audience as well. So it's kind of good for both worlds and I enjoyed that. It really worked. The number of Transformers in the movie, I wish it was just a little bit higher. I'd love to have seen Rat Trap. I think if you're a Maximals fan at least, you'd want Rat Trap there, but scale wise I don't know how they would have done that it was good for what we got um, in the sense like we had Cheetor we had Primo, we had Air Razor we had Rhinox, I'm happy with that Autobot wise could give or take uh, the lineup was strong let's put it that way again Mirage stole the show and I was quite shocked at that that really shocked me he was the star kind of and it worked. It really did work. So coming from a strong reboot in the sense of Bumblebee, which in my opinion is a better movie than Rise of the Beasts. Rise of the Beasts is one of the best Transformers sequels we've had since oh, Dark of the Moon. I've always maintained Dark of the Moon was a if you were just to put Dark of the Moon right after Transformers, it's a good sequel. But unfortunately, we had Revenge of the Fallen, Age of Extinction, last night. This is so strong, it eclipses the other three. And it might just be above Dark of the Moon for me. And I really enjoyed Dark of the Moon because it is a Generation 1 story. This done something unique. Let's take a blend of stories from the universes you get from Beast Wars, from Generation 1, let's merge them together, let's bring in another thing, we'll slot it in here, and this is the road we're going. And it's working. So I was very impressed with it, but I preferred the Bumblebee movie. I still prefer the 80s aesthetic. They nailed it, I think, after waiting for so long, and the disappointments, I think, as fans we had... Bumblebee was refreshing, and this is refreshing compared to some of the stories I did hear about how they had problems in editing, trying to piece their story together. I don't see where they had problems. The human element in this story is very low. Of course there is kind of side characters, just when they're introducing our main protagonists, but Diaz is a great protagonist. You're, you're behind them straight away. And... Elena, you are behind her as well. 
and it's it's not like a silly and it's not like a silly Shire LaBeouf Megan Fox scenario. It's they feel real. They feel like they fit. And that is that. They've done well. Absolutely fantastic. So overall, I give this movie a four out of five. I think there's things they could have done better. Things I'd love to see, but with the way things are going, I think they're keeping their cards close to their chest in this one. Um, and I, I, if you get a chance, go and see it. I seen this movie in two D on just a normal screen, and it was a busy cinema. Not one of my best cinema going ventures, but I plan to re see it on IMAX three D. I want to see it in the bigger screen. I want to see the uh, the effects work in three D, and I think that's going to be a better way to describe the spoiler review. Um, and that'll be like a week or two. I want to try and, like I said, keep them separated. I don't want to give things away for people. Please go and see it. You will enjoy it. It feels like a summer blockbuster. It feels like the time in Transformers at the summer, especially those first three movies, just raked in the money. And us fans loved it because then we got new toys. So <laughs> it's good ways to look at it like that. They've done well here, guys. Trust me in this one. I was a bit worried when I heard Maximals all the way back. I'm not a major Beast Wars fan. They've done really well here, and I loved it. So, check it out, guys. There will be a review coming of Star Saber. I'll be doing it really soon. Been very busy. And we'll get back into normality. But if you do go and see the movie, enjoy. Let me know in the comments if you've seen it. Take care, and I'll see you in the next Optimus Wilbur video. Thank you for everyone who tuned in today's video. If you want to make baby Grimlock happy, why not hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. All new videos are always coming right here in Optimus Wilbur Reviews. If you'd like to follow me in any of my social media links, all the descriptions are in the description box below. And of course, as always, I cannot stress this enough, I wish to thank Cybertronic Spree for allowing me to use their song Cybertronic Warrior as the theme of this channel. Guys, this is an incredible band that does incredible covers and recently just done an amazing album of the Transformers 1986 movie soundtrack. Please follow them and all their social media links. I have every description in the description box below. Please check them out and as always Transformer fans till all are one.